or his, his position was that generally in society, there's a tendency to uh, connect atheism with intellectualism, uh, that it's some kind of intelligently elite position or intelligent, intellectually who, valid. Who said that? Ray Comfort. Oh, okay. Uh, that, it's some kind, that it's intellectually valid and that you know, the religious belief is not justifiable. And his claim was that it, the exact opposite is true, that it takes more faith to be an atheist and more intelligence to be a theist. Right, oh, but you're asking if we think that atheism and intelligence always goes, go hand in hand, and the answer is no, I know some very dumb atheists. Yeah. I, I don't think that being an atheist makes you smart. Oh, okay. So, so it's not like um, some kind of, uh, I guess I'm wondering, do atheists have like this position where like um, having elite intelligence and compared to like religious people? Uh, well, you know, depending on which where you want to go find your data, and I don't know how thoroughly this type of thing has actually been discovered or, or has been studied. Um, there are very intelligent theists out there, um, you know, doctors, PhDs, scientists studying things, and they're, they're sure, theists. Absolutely. Um, they tend to be a different type of theist often than, than you know, for example, and I, and I hate to go to the other extreme, but like a televangelist. Um, there are also atheists. I'm not convinced that televangelists are terribly dumb. Well, that's, I mean. yeah. There's, there's an argument that they may in fact be very crafty. Um, but there are, there are also atheists who aren't necessarily bright. Um, and one could make the right. argument that depending on how you define atheism, a baby, a newborn, may in fact be an atheist. They don't have a belief in a god. Um, there, but that goes to whether or not they can actually even consider the questions. Right, so. but I, I want to stress that you can be really smart and still be wrong. Yeah. That, I, I mean, um, you can be the smartest guy in the world and you can believe something completely crazy. I mean, you know, that happens all the time among scientists that uh, a guy who's who's been a brilliant scientist who's come up with a lot of theories uh, that ha that become widely used in the scientific community, then come up with something completely off the wall. That doesn't make them dumb. Um, it just means people's beliefs are a very complex thing. Oh right. Oh okay. So um, do y'all like um? Does it kind of, in a sense, depress you that, or in your eyes that there's no afterlife or like, you'll be like floating in clouds when you're dead or something that it's just pretty much over? Does it depress me? No. Would I, I would prefer like would I prefer to live forever or live on as an afterlife or whatever? Sure. Who wouldn't? But it doesn't depress me. Um, and and I, I make that distinction because it, depression is, is a kind of often a, an irrational response to, to events that you're just unable to handle. And one of the things that you know, you've got someone like Kirk Cameron who claims to be a, to been a devout atheist, but never really based it on anything. For other atheists um, who have come to their current position based on careful evaluation of evidence and arguments and considering science and the world around them, um, developing a healthy mindset based beginning with skepticism and critical thinking can help you deal with um, issues like death. Uh, I, I look at it as I, there may in fact be an afterlife. I have no idea. I have no good reason to believe there is. So the, the best uh, use of my time is to live my life as if this is my only, only opportunity to enjoy anything ever, which, which makes me appreciate every moment far greater than I would if I thought, yeah, you know, I'm just wiping my feet here on earth and uh, I'll get to live forever with Jesus and he's going to tell me all the stuff that I wanted to know but never bothered to actually go find out. Now I can go actually go and bother to find out. Yeah, I, I would love there to be an afterlife. I would also really like it if I were like six foot four and a lot more muscle bound without <laughs> having to work out. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm five foot eight, uh, but that doesn't depress me. It's just something that uh, I, I come to grips with because yeah. that's the fact. At Mark Twain's, there's, and I'm going to misquote this, but the, the gist of it is, is that um, he wasn't sad for all of the years prior to him being born. So there's no reason for him to be sad about the years that are going to occur after he died. Mm, okay, that sounds cool. Um, it seems like, well, as far as the Christian way, um, it's kind of an easy way to 
way to push on people who have been like bad circumstances and say, well, it's okay. You can be a uh, poor or a slave or or whatever because you're going to have this nice, happy afterlife. Right. Yeah. There's also an issue that, you know, you're talking about dealing with whether or not this makes you depressed. Um, you can't be sad about something that you never had. Now, that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, we, we talk about, ad, some of us, advocating the complete elimination of religion at some point, which is absolutely absurd. I don't, I don't believe that that's ever likely to happen because people are going to hold all kinds of beliefs. But if you were raised with no idea of an afterlife, if you were raised from birth um, with the understanding that this, is, this was your one shot at life, then you can't possibly miss the afterlife until you've been presented with that concept or until that claim has been taken away. So people who used to be religious and have become atheists often have a di more difficult time dealing um, with the loss of, the, you know, it's like somebody stole all these little religious bits um, out of their psyche. Um, whereas somebody who was raised atheist doesn't necessarily have that, that same problem coming to grips with things. All right, cool. Y'all take it easy. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Okay.